just for today, Father. We thank you that we're able to come together in unity to partake of your precious word today, Father. Father, if anyone has grieved the Holy Spirit in any fashion or way, I ask, Father, I come before you and ask that you would forgive them. Father, that their hearts would be pricked. Father, to discern what you are convicting them of, Father. That they would be uh, ever so watchful over their walk now. Father, that they would fulfill your will and your purpose. Father, we bind those things of infirmity. Father, we bind confusion, frustration, even intelligence. Yes. Father, we bind those now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so last week uh, we were teaching. Oh, I was teaching. Well, the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's go real quick to uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. So. Okay. Hebrews chapter 1, verse. Let's go from 1 to 3. Okay. Is it in the Amplified? I got it in the Amplified. In many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways God spoke of old to our forefathers and by the prophets. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time, he made, produced, built, operated, and arranged them in order. He is the sole expression of the glory of God, the light beam, the outraying or radiance of the divine, and he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word power. When he had, by offering himself, accomplished our cleansing of sins and riddance of guilt, he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high. Okay, so we look at uh, here God has given us a beautiful gift which he gave us Jesus and everything that he did at the cross was to strip the powers of darkness so uh, when our will came, we were able to choose correctly if we chose to, okay? So a lot of people, even as Christians, are still choosing wrong paths or wrong ways or their attitudes are messed up. So uh, every time God is wanting to transform you and change you, the flesh will fight against you, kind of like how he did with Eve in the Garden of Eden. How, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, how he, um, God says to her, he says, I'm going to have enmity, that Eve is going to have enmity with Satan, and her seed and his seed. Now, a lot of times, uh, when the enemy is out there, we don't realize that in our heart, where there is still seeds of darkness, those have to be removed by the power of God. It is only the Holy Spirit that can show you. Yes. If the Holy Spirit doesn't show you, you're going to guess, you're going to be confused, you're going to get frustrated because you're wanting to do it on your own. One of the biggest things is when God uh, released the Holy Spirit to be our counselor, Okay, so in the giftings of the Holy Spirit, the, here comes the Spirit of Counsel. Now, the Spirit of Counsel does not need the world's, right. the world's intellect. That's right. Because if we mix, a lot of times we have to 
could just go, whatever stuff that we read concerning how to counsel someone, we have to get all that, repent for it, because we're seeking knowledge how to fix people when we're not the ones that are going to fix them. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. So we have to renounce the hidden things that we search concerning darkness. Yep. So a lot of times when we connect to that, we connect to an area where the enemy loves to have a voice. Okay, so kind of like uh, you got a lot of programs going out in which they're not bad. But they don't allow you to have freedom. Let's say AA. Oh, come on. <laughs> you always on. speak over yourself. Oh. I'm an alcoholic, oh. and I don't come know on. what else they say. Preach on that. And so what happens is they continue speaking that till it becomes truth to them. So <laughs> without realizing, they don't understand where ignorance is that we speak certain things that God says, wait a minute. If you get into my presence, right. I will show you a clearer way. So let's go real quick. Uh, let's go to uh, let's go to First Thessalonians. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Good to see Courtney. Good yes, morning, man. Sharon. Hey, Christy. All these yes. people that weren't here before. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's go to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And let's read from verse 9 to 13. For you recall our hard toil and struggles, brethren. We work night and day and plied our trade in order not to be a burden to any of you for our support while we proclaim the glad tidings, the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, yes, and God's also how, wait, you are witnesses, yes, and God also. How unworldly and upright and blameless was our behavior toward you believers who adhered to and trusted in and relied on our Lord Jesus Christ. For you know how, as a father dealing with his children, we used to exhort each of you personally and stimulating and, and, and encouraging and charging you a lot of charging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and the glorious blessedness into which true believers will enter after Christ's return. And we also especially Thank God continually for this, that when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. Okay, so here I want to show you is... I was talking a little bit last night, a little bit about when God has given us this ministry, and a lot of people are very confused about their ministry. What am I called to? I want a label. Am I really called an evangelist? Am I really called an intercessor? What am I called to? And what happens is they don't realize is that confusion, when it is there, it is battling you in the realm of darkness so you never know what you've been called to. Now, if you read the word of God in the gospel, it says, go into the highways and the byways. And we're like, oh no. <laughs> I want to have a specific calling. So, when we don't obey, okay, and receive his word with glad tidings that you have to remember when you're called and you're sent out, you will be tested at the beginning of how faithful you are. Okay? So here God sends you to a couple people 
and he says, okay, I want you to minister to them. And you minister to them, and all of a sudden they're starting to reflect things of trying to pull on you, okay? They're trying to pull on you, and you're like, oh, I don't like this. But not knowing that they're trying to pull the word out for deliverance. Right. But we, when we look at people, we're like, I don't want to minister to them. I don't want to uh, pass them to somebody else. So what happens is prejudice and pride set in. So we have to understand that when God is dealing with us, we have to look at, number one, our own heart. Think of all the ugliness that he delivered you of. Yep. Amen. Yep. Would have anybody ever wanted to deal, deal with you? Probably not. Probably not. Mm. I don't want to deal with myself. <laughs> I'm like, I got a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. But when I came to God and surrendered, he started building in me and developing who he is inside me. So here comes the characters. Let's go to uh, Second Peters. Second Peters uh, chapter 1. And I want to go to 1 all the way to 11 right now. Second Peter 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1 to 11. Simon, a, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle, special messenger of Jesus Christ, to those who have received, obtained, an equal privilege of, like precious faith, with ourselves, in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace, God's favor, and peace, which is perfect, well-being, all necessary, good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Ah, let's go back. Ooh. <clears throat> let's go back. Uh, let's read verse may, 2. May, great, may grace God's favor and peace, which is perfect, well-being, all necessary, good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Ah. Amen. So what is God going to set you free of? Woo. The oh, agitation yes. that you have with people. Yes. He's going to say, once you find peace with me, that peace, you're going to be able to release. But we're like, no, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. They aggravate me. Why is it that God sends people that will aggravate you? Get, your Get on your <laughs> last nerve. And we think it's the devil and God said, wait a minute. I'm sending them because I need to stretch yep. you. Mm -hmm. I need to develop you into who you have to be for the course that I've set you up for. Amen. So a lot of times people would rather go in the mission field when God already set them in the church field. Yep. Mm -hmm. Come on. Your mission work here. Right. See, if you can't love those that are around you, That's how are you right. going to love those in other countries? Uh-oh, right. come on. Is it that you love them because they receive? Oh, come on. Uh -huh. And the ones that you're around, they don't receive? How is it that you deal with those? <laughs> well, they want the word. Okay? Here God goes and says, okay, I'm going to set you free from agitation, frustration, even the passion you once had. Yeah. I'm going to change that, Amen. that you have my passion for actual souls. Yes. You don't look at what you see there. You look at what you see there mm -hmm. and reflect and put out. Okay? So a lot of times we want to pick and choose who we want to minister to. And God said, wait a minute. Did the disciples get to pick and choose who they want to minister to? No. Matter of fact, every time they did good, here came the enemy. Yep. Using someone to tear them down. Usually they were. 
one of the biggest things that people need to start praying, you know, is God, take out the deception out of me. Because I'm not seeing clear. And when I see people, I see them by what they've been labeled. Yeah. Unclean. What else? Unforgiving. What else? Uh, depressed. Uh, come on. Somebody throw out something to me. See, you got to remember, God is giving you power. He's equipped you for all things. That means in the mess that you see, God has equipped you for that purpose. And if they don't receive it, now God's going to test you. If they don't receive it, how do you react? How do you react? In love. You're supposed to in love and kindness. Still in, love. in love and kindness? You're supposed to. You're supposed to. Okay, but what happens? What happens? Come on. Get angry. A lot of people get angry. Flesh gets in the way. Yep. Come on. <laughs> Not the flesh. We're a bunch of Christians that don't walk in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So you got to remember, any time in the flesh that we take, it's there to come against God to destroy what God has built. So when God is transforming and changing, that five minutes you have in the flesh can destroy some foundation. Yeah, yep, yep. Because it's an enmity to God. Yes, You're is. stepping into a realm that the world walks in. Mm, you know how yeah, a lot of Christians say, just give me five minutes in the flesh. And they want to punch that person out. Ooh. Where is that in the Bible? Nowhere. Not. Hey, he delivered us from violence. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Right? Amen. So he said he, said he would deliver you from violence, from whatever that is binding you. But we want to have a say-so versus... Okay, God, I'm surrendering to you. I don't want control over the situation. God, have your way. And then God's having his way, and then you step in and inject what you think. Amen. And you pull away from what God is actually doing in setting freedom because you there's this voice that wants to speak and says, well, you know better. You know how to deal with this. You don't have to follow the rules. Right? Mm. Because I want to show you something. When the Bible says to love one another, what does he actually mean? To love one another. What does he actually mean? He means you're going to strip yourself yep. of yourself. That's right. And you're going to reflect Nothing but God. Amen. So it's supposed to be. Yeah. So let's continue in these verses in Second Peter chapter one. Okay, so he's gonna strip you of what? Fears? Yep. He's gonna bring such freedom from fear, aggravation, passions, and moral conflicts. What? Conflicts. Ah, what's moral conflict? Anybody. Conflicts between people, or but no, but from doing right do, between the doing the right, what is right, and doing what's wrong. Okay, moral. So now we step in this way. Here, God wants to get you out of that, but you want to tell the person that you're doing they're doing wrong, right? Yes. And what happens? They don't listen. Why don't they listen? Why? Could it be that you're not listening either? Amen. That's right. So you're being challenged in that area? Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. God has allowed you to be around people, and he says, okay, I'm going to give you things that
that will protect you and keep you. But if you step in this, this other realm of your old nature, remember I said last night, the more you look back, the more you become hard. Then all of a sudden you're not feeling the convictions of the Holy Spirit. The only reason why people don't feel the conviction is because their heart is getting hard. Yep, yep. That's all. When you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, always remember the Holy Spirit will convict you. And he will convict you. Yes. And every time you turn away, you're pushing him. Mm -hmm. And saying, I'm not ready for that. I don't like it. I don't feel right about it. Yeah. Okay. Let me toil in this a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Because I'm frustrated with that person. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. See, you got to remember, the battle is not you. That's right. And we want a good fight. <laughs> I used to love a good fight. I would do things to aggravate this man because mm. stuff he was doing, I would like, I'm going to break all his records. Uh -oh. Those were antiques. Yeah. They would have been right. now antiques, so for big money. But who, who goes in, gets those records, and I start breaking them. And thank God he didn't get up and punch me. He was so mad he had to walk out of the room, go outside, and just take off. But I love to aggravate him because I wanted him to notice me. I want him, and you gotta remember that's a sick law. Yeah, it is. Ooh, that's it. I, I, I'm gonna push him because I have to make him know that he's aggravated me or made me upset, and I want him to see the wrong that he's done. You got a lot of people that are very manipulative. Oh, Jesus. I remember I was really good at manipulating. I look like the person that was, oh, I feel so bad for you. Even his aunt said, you can come live with me and get rid of him. Yeah. That's her blood. Yep. Uh, but terrible. the manipulation comes in and says, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn people against him. Mm -mm. They're going to see me as the one that's trying. <laughs> Boy, I was so bad. They all wanted to bring me in. And man, when God started showing me my heart, it was so ugly. Yep. It was so ugly that I tried and tried to try to bring that into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. And God says, nope. you're not going to have a mixture of sin. That's right. You either choose my way or you choose your way. That means every time you want to cuss that person out, what happens? You gotta, people are cussing. That's a blasphemous tongue. Mm. Yeah, I said, God, take this tongue, take that spirit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> because I want you to see something. Even if it's not cussing, it's saying right. other words right. to bring damage to somebody else. Amen. What happens is we come to a place that we don't realize that's very deceptive. And you gotta ask the Lord, take every bit of deception yes. out of me. Well, I don't got no deception. Watch. Yep. Watch an opportunity that God gives you and he's going to reveal your heart. Kind of like, oh, I love you. You know, in the back of your mind, you can't stand <laughs> I love you. And you're not supposed to tell me. <sighs> Bless God. I'm 
glad you're here. Come on. Preach. Come on. See, I want you to see the openness of the heart that God wants to show you. Yeah. Before he will show you anybody else's heart, he has to show you your heart. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And if you're not going to allow yourself for the Holy Spirit to show you your heart, is you're going to constantly tell people about how bad they are. Mm-hmm. When you That's look true. at the Word of God, you look at here the people of God always dealt with people that were bound with spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But how did they deal with them? Yeah. How is it that they could come in an area and bring such power that it brought judgment for people to change? How? How did that happen? Because they're led by the Holy Spirit. Here you look at Elijah and Elisha. You look at Elijah's walk. Elijah, he even hid in a cave because he wanted to preserve his life. Even in all those wickedness, God says, okay, come with me now. You're not even going to see death. But see, he was obedient regardless if he liked the situation or not. He came out to obey God. Everything is taking you to the place, are you going to obey God or not? Amen. Yes. You don't like the situation? Then go in the presence of God and start allowing you God to show you what actually is going on. See, a lot of times we look at situations through the eyes of hurt. And so we say, this is wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. God says, wait a minute. You're going by what you see. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to go by your senses and not by what the Holy Spirit is saying. I know you didn't want me to take it this way. No, it's all right. You can take because it. Because I want you to see that we think we're spiritual people. God oh, said, wait on. a minute, wake up. You can't even love the brother or sister oh, that's come on. near you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, come on you up. can. In Christ, yep. you can love that's him. Right. How Sorry. is it that Jesus called Judas friend? Oh, come on. Even though he knew. He called him friend. If you look in the word of God, how many times did Jesus look at Judas and say, you're a child of the devil. You're a child of the devil. You're a child of the devil. He didn't do that. That's right. He loved him in spite of what he was called to. That's right. See, you got to remember that we forget how Jesus walked. That's right. What happened when he went? Let's go real quick. Because I'm in a place that I wasn't going to go, but Amen. let's let the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. So let's finish the verses. Let's start with three. But I want you to see at the beginning. Simon Peter is a servant, an apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ. To those who have received, obtained uh, equal privileges of the special faith with ourselves in and through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. There is nothing good inside of me. That's right. Amen. Nothing good inside. But when Christ is inside me, the reflection of who he is must come out. Amen. There was a, a house that we went to and we were ministering in Florida. And uh, at that house, when we came in, uh, we pulled in the driveway and the the tree was dead. Yep. I'm like, yep. I'm looking at all the other trees and they're very much alive. 
And the woman says, I don't know why, but somebody, I think God, or somebody put a curse on this tree. So we went and we prayed. We broke the curse. The next day, leaves were coming out. Now, that curse that was spoken over there was to set something in place that the enemy says, you know what? I'm going to cover you and I'm going to set this curse there to hinder you. Mm -hmm. Jesus. How is it that I could, God allows me to walk? Remember how he looked at the tree? What did he do? You cursed it. Now I'm seeing a tree that's cursed. And now I speak to that of darkness and I command it to go Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And the very next day, it blooms. Amen. How is that? Wait a minute. It's not in its season to bloom. That's right. Come on. But it still bloom at the very words that were spoken. Amen. Amen. So you just don't, you don't know the power that you carry. When you speak to the people, there is such great power. But what happens is the enemy wants to restrain you and hold you back so you don't become who you have to yep. become. And so what happens is that we look at the people and say, you're the reason why I can't be what I'm supposed to be. Not so. That's right. If he did it at the cross, he stripped the powers, how much power are you walking in Come with on. the resurrection of hey, Jesus hey. Christ? In the power of God, you have the ability to love yes. everyone. Amen. Because you're not walking in the phileo, or, yeah, in the phileo love, you're walking in the agape love. You're looking at through God's eyes and saying, you know what? I love you in spite of what you're doing. Amen. I love you with the purity of love, God's love. Yes, amen. And when that happens, here comes the coals placed upon that person's head. The coals that are going to light up just by the power of love. How is it that God can bring coals upon people's heads? And cause them to come to repentance. And you not do anything. Man, every time I would get irritated and frustrated, God would convict me. Mm -hmm. I would go to my house, I'm so sorry for my attitude. No, no, you're fine. I understand the situation. No. I repent for my attitude because. I knew that that wasn't God. I had to acknowledge the sin and say, you know what? Regardless of how he felt, I knew inside that that was not the trait of God. Amen. Mm. Yes. Okay. I want you to see something because everywhere you walk, the Holy Spirit's going to deal with you. And he's going to say, did you know what you just did? Mm. And no one's around. Mm. Yeah. But yet this conviction mm. falls upon you by the Holy Spirit and says, you know, the way you just spoke or the way you thought. Yep. Let's bring it down to thoughts yep. of that person Amen. is yep. a sin. Yep. Amen. Yep. Because it's off the line of how God is causing you to see people and, and deal with people. Yeah, come on. But yet, we look at the people that do not change. Mm. They don't change, they don't change, they don't change. They don't. Mm. And all of a sudden, you become weary and frustrated. Mm. You know, the other day, we were looking for a scripture and it took forever. And it was in the beginning. Yep. But let's go there real quick. Okay, wait, wait. Don't go there. Let's finish these scriptures. Getting excited. Verse 3. 
you going to read them or you want me? No, go ahead. Okay. So verse 3. For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence, virtue. By means of these he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises, so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness, and corruption that is in the world because of covetousness, lust, and greed, and become sharers, partakers of the divine nature. For this very reason, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence, and in exercising knowledge, develop self-control, and exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, endurance, and in exercising steadfastness, develop godliness, piety, and in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection, and exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. Mm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Are we good? No. Okay. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle or unfruitful until the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. For whoever lacks these qualities is blind, spiritually short-sighted, seeing only what is near to him and has become oblivious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Because of this, brethren, be all the more so solicitous and eager to make sure, to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. Amen. For, an, for so an entrance will be, sub, well, thus therefore will be richly, abundantly provided for you entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What does he supply to you? Ooh. Okay, let's go back. Let's go real quick to verse 5. Okay? Okay, so it's, for this reason, adding to your diligence to a divine promise, employ every effort in exercising your faith. You don't think it's going to take faith to love someone? Mm. It is. Yes, it is. But here, you're going in there, blind, and God says, okay, I'm going to stretch your faith. Mm -hmm. And as I stretch it, you're going to know how to love correctly. Amen. Okay, so, uh, here we go. Uh, to, okay, to exercise your faith, to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and exercising virtue develops knowledge, intelligence, and in exercising knowledge, it develops what? Self-control. Self-control. <laughs> Come on. Self-control. And, and in exercising self-control, you develop what? Ooh, sadness. sadness. Patience and endurance. Ah! Could it be that because you're not exercising and allowing the Holy Spirit to have self-control, mm -hmm. that gifting, yeah. that fruit, to develop inside you, yeah. kind of like, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I like to throw my fits. Mm -hmm. Most people will not admit to that, but I did. Because I like having control over someone else versus having God having control over me to bring that actual fruit out. Yep. Here comes a fruit. It's buddy. Now all of a sudden, now God is going to put you in a place.
to develop you. And as he develops you, he's developing your endurance. Nope. He's a developing your knowledge, mm -hmm. your faith and virtue. Mm. To knowledge, uh, okay, so let me go back. For this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. What's being added to your faith? Virtue. virtue. The virtue of who? Christ. The virtue. Ah, the <laughs> life-giving energy. The power of yep. God yep. coming out. It's coming and allowing you to reflect Him. Amen. Yes. Even in the worst of situations. Yes, amen. Okay, but a lot of times we're so frustrated with the people around us that we're like, oh, I'm tired. So let me, real quick, go ahead. It says, to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Yes. And to brotherly kindness, love. Yes, amen. For all these things are yours and abound you and will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks such things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. Therefore, brethren, even more diligent to make your call and your election sure. Mm. For if you do these things, you will never what? Stumble. Hmm. Let's go back. You will never what? Stumble. Stumble and fall. Yeah. Okay. So let me take you back to, let's go to Jeremiah. Chapter 1, I believe. Oh. Okay. So, let's go from verse 16. Well, let's start with 14. Come on, go ahead and read that. 14? 14. Okay. Because I want you to know that evil is trying to come near you. <clears throat> and when it comes, I want you to see the man of God, the prophet, how he responds. Okay? Amen. So, sometimes <clears throat> we're afraid to respond a certain way because we're, the enemy is like, you're bad, you're a failure, you're bad, shame on you, shame on you, okay. shame on you. Okay? So, what has to happen is you've got to get in the presence of God yes. for God to comfort you. Yes. Amen. In the timing of pain and frustration, you have to. Yes. If you don't come into his presence, you're going to walk away. Yeah. See, God, a lot of times that the enemy sets us up, but so does God. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Amen. I'm going to set you in a place where the whole world is going to see what I have done in your situation. Okay, so let's go from verse 14 to verse 16 for a second. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north, the evil which the prophets had foretold as a result of national sin shall disclose itself and break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I will call all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord, and they will come and set every one his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls round about, and against all the cities of Judah, as God's judicial act, a consequence of Judah's wickedness. And I will utter my judgments against them, for all the wickedness of those who have forsaken me, 
burn incense to other gods, and worship the works of their own hands, idols. But you, Jeremiah. No, no, let's stop. Okay, stop. Okay. I want you to look at this. Here the enemy comes, and he sets his throne at your gate. Mm. Mm. Huh. Look at your situation and look how the enemy has come with his kingdom and its throne to sit in front of you. To agonize you, to frustrate you, to get you to the point that I can't take this any longer. Right? But we're seeing what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people that have built idols. Idols concerning money, idols concerning sickness, idols concerning whatever is out there. And they're serving them with gladness. But God said, get yourself ready because they're going to come from the north and they're going to bring their kingdom and their throne. And it's going to sit right in front of your gate. Why would God do this? Why would God allow this? That the kingdoms of this world would be broken to set that captive free. You got to remember, that person, the, let's look at the person that's giving you the hardest time. There's a kingdom, a stronghold that has built them. And now God says, I'm going to entrust you with that person. Nah. Let's go by the feelings of Jeremiah. Let me read this. So Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, let's go to verse 17. Jeremiah 1, 17. Oh, no, no. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17. Okay. But you, Jeremiah, gird up your loins. Arise and tell them all that I commanded you. Do not be dismayed and break down at the sight of their faces. Hmm. What is happening to Jeremiah? He's not to break down. He's being commanded not to break down or be dismayed. Okay, get ready. Here God says, but you, Jeremiah. He's not talking to anybody else. He's saying, you, Jeremiah, I want you to get yourself ready. Because yeah. if you don't get yourself ready, what's going to happen? Is you're going to break down. You're going to be dismayed. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me the definition of dismay. Disheartened. Disappointed. Disappointed. Disheartened. Where have you gotten disappointed? God, nobody wants to look at me. Everybody's like, down. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> because I want you to see God is preparing Jeremiah. He says, okay, you're going to have these kind of feelings that are going to come against you, but I want you to understand that I am now commanding you Let's see what he's saying. But you, Jeremiah, gird up your loins. Arise and tell them all that I command you, do not be dismayed and break down at the sight of their faces. Lest I confound you before them and permit you to be what? Overcome. You don't do it God's way. What's going to happen? Become overcome failure. Failure. No. You're going to be overcome with what is going on with the people. Amen. Yep. You're going to feel this. What they're feeling. They're going to feel there's all this anger, this frustration. God says, you don't obey me. I'm going to let you be overcome by these things. Amen. Come on, I want, I, I want you to see something. That there are times that we're feeling so broken down and disappointed and 
frustrated that God has not set these people free yet. Mm. He hasn't set them free? See, guys, it's firing where the ones that are free. So God says, okay, they're not free, but neither are you. <laughs> Amen, that's true. Come on. God says, okay, I want you to see if you don't do it my way, yep. that everything that you fear has now come upon you. Yep. Ooh. Mm, what up? Mm -hmm. Come on, Sonia. <laughs> Take it in. Take it in. Take it in. Because I'm giving you some nuggets here. Yep. When we obey God and what he is telling us to do, what's he telling us to do? Stand up and see the salvation of the Lord when you speak these things out there. Because you're dealing with a dark kingdom. And not only a dark kingdom, someone is sitting on the throne. Satan himself is sitting on that throne. Come on. Yep. Capture it. Come on. And that person is speaking the same way that he did to Jesus in the wilderness. Yep. If I give you all these kingdoms, yep. just bow down and worship me. I want you to think. If you bow down, what happens? Here we go. If you bow down, the heart becomes hard. Yeah. See, there are reasons why he says, okay, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to keep you. All the promises are true. But we're looking at, wait a minute, I talked to you, nothing's happening. I talked to you again, and the men of God, the women of God have prophesied to me, and I have not seen anything come to pass. You been there? What's happening? You're trusting me. You're in the place of testing mm -hmm. and being stretched. Yep. You have to be stretched in order to take down the kingdom of Satan. Amen. Because if you don't, you're going to feed upon your own emotions yep. and what you're feeling. They're against me, they're against me, they're against me. They're not against you. That's right. It's what is inside yep. them is against you. Yeah. You now have to make a stand and say, you know what? Regardless of their never change, yep. I'm going to still continue obeying God. Amen. Amen. And it's now God's battle that they're dealing with now. Now, let's look at this. It's God's battle, but they're getting all the stuff. They're getting money. They're <laughs> getting, they get away with their sin, right? Come on. And you're looking at them. I've been suffering. I've been going through all these things. And look at him. Wow. Or look at her. Uh-oh. They're doing all the wrong things, but they are walking peaceful. Mm. Mm. See, I remember that when we look that way, here's the enemy saying, come over to the other side. Mm. And see, I remember, God has called you he has equipped you with things that are so powerful that are not from this world. Amen. When things like that happen, I say, Father, I give you thanks, and I send my angel before them to dismantle the powers of darkness. Thank you. See, I don't have to sit there and put up with their mess. 
Did Jesus sit there and put up with their mess? What happened? Okay, let me go. So I don't want to lose you. Okay. It says, but you, dear mine, gird up your loins, arise, and tell them all, I command you, do not be dismayed. What do you say? He do not commanded be dismayed. you yep. not to become disappointed. That's right. Or dismayed. Yeah. Okay? And break down at the sights of their face. Mm-hmm. Lest I confound you before them and permit you to be overcome. See, this is a serious battle that you're yep. in right now. Yep. You're in a battle right now that is so evil. These are last days, and the enemy is trying whatever he can to stop you from going forward. Yep. Can you imagine them being the way they are, and all of a sudden you start doing a dance? And start praising the Lord. What is it going to make those people Ooh, feel like? Even more bad. <laughs> kind of like where Romans chapter 5 says to what? Glory and your what? Jesus is a Man, do a little dance and promise <laughs> them and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to work up hey. that thing. That the enemy is trying to yep. take out. Come on. And you're going to allow the Spirit of God to rise up. See, this is all that God is yep. saying. Amen. You look at them and God says, wait a minute, I want you to rise up. I called you to intercession because Amen. you're going against utter darkness. Rulers in high places. Mm-hmm. We have to very quickly start praying for our cities, our yes, countries, Yes, amen. Our Come on. Yep. You don't know what is in the agenda of the enemy. Yep. If you go into that place, God will start telling you what is in the agenda. Amen. Amen. That's right. And this is how I want you to take it. But I need you to obey me. Amen. Because... You're looking at that person. God said, wait a minute. Look at everything that I entrusted you with. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wait a minute. I don't feel like it. (laughs) I don't feel worthy. Uh Uh-oh. Watch out. Come on. Why don't you feel worthy? Wow. Why? Has the devil talked oh. enough uh-huh. to make you believe you're on uh-huh. Amen. Come on. See, God did make a mistake when he set you up for a plan. Ooh. When he set you up, he equipped you with everything you're going to need. But see, because we've allowed the enemy to speak, and God says, what? Why don't you, my friend, and I'm going to show you that when the enemy comes, it shall not come near you. Amen. Amen. That means no pestilence. Yep. No darkness that walks at the noonday. What darkness? Destruction. Go back to Psalms 91. God says, these things shall not come against you because I am protecting you. Yeah. You have to allow him to protect you now. Amen. Amen. You have to know that under the shadow of the Almighty, uh-huh. he's keeping you preserved because he set you up. Yes. Not for a fall. That's right. And if you, if you fall, get back up. Amen. Amen. I was telling uh, the people on Tuesday class that one day I used to smoke, and that was my comfort zone, okay? 
And so once God delivered me of that, I was so frustrated going through something. I'm like, oh, I can't take it. I go pick up the cigarette. I light it. I start smoking it. Then, all of a sudden, I start feeling like this high, this euphoria uh -oh. that I just took in. I'm like, that's ain't a joint. <laughs> Wait a minute, why am I feeling this? Because I am feeling what is actually hidden now. Uh. I'm feeling the things that they had come together concerning cigarettes, how they prayed, how they sacrificed, mm. everything that they did concerning these, just the one thing I picked up. Mm. I could literally feel the darkness that was assigned to tobacco. Man, when I felt it, I'm like, whoa, where is this coming from? How is it that I'm feeling something that a drug only releases? Because of that thing is bound to the spirit of witchcraft. I'm just telling you what I went through. Amen. I want you to see that there are things that God has delivered you of, yep. and you go back and taste it, oh, you're going to taste the darkness oh, that worse. He has assignment with it. Yeah. When I felt that, I started repenting. Because it wanted to come vex my soul. Yeah. Vex it out. Trouble, problems, evil, whatever it was. It wanted to come kind of like uh, in uh, Lot. Mm -hmm. It wanted to vex my pure soul. Mm. Something evil wanted to vex me. To keep me down in a place. I felt like I couldn't get up from it. Mm. Whoa, that was just a cigarette. <laughs> but the Lord started showing me the spirits that are assigned to it. See, we just take it and we smoke it and don't think a big thing. Mm. But we don't understand the darkness that it has with it when it comes. Yeah. Amen. So we like... It's not a big thing. You don't know the sacrifices that were done yeah. just for that yeah. tobacco. The evil that took to create that. Same with alcohol. Yep. Spirits. See, you gotta remember when God delivers you, <clears throat> He cleans your vessel so when you go do it, yep. you can feel something's not right. Something is really off. Yep. Anybody ever got there? Uh -huh. Amen. But yep. you tasted yep. something that you got delivered of. Yep. So you gotta remember, your God is purifying your spirit, your soul, that when these things come, you understand the darkness that it comes with. Man, when the when the Lord started showing me that, I started seeing the same spirits of weed, all kinds of drugs, all come together. Mm. And it was releasing the same thing to all these people. Mm. Didn't matter if it was weed, pain pill, it was releasing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want to feel better. Mm -hmm. I want to feel relieved, deceiving myself that I could find some relief back there. I've, Amen. Uh -uh. Right. I've 
called you out. I've set you up. I've called you for a purpose. One of the greatest things that the Lord had told me, he said, equip the people. Equip them quickly. And I'm going to allow the word just to come out, come out, and you don't know what you're saying, but you're going to speak for me. I'm going to give you just gems. I'm going to give you some gold that will sustain you. To recognize that your spiritual eyes must be open in these last days. Everything that is coming against you, you have to recognize it for what it is. Yeah. <coughs> Why is that the enemy wants is bombarding you with so much stuff? Why? Mm. So that your calling never comes yeah. forth. Yeah. Man, when I when the Lord started telling me this, all of a sudden I just had this fear come over me. It was a godly fear. Amen. And I had this fear that came over me when God was telling me all this stuff. And all of a sudden I started having this fear concerning teaching the Word of God. To those that teach the Word of God is a greater judgment. Yeah. Because we teach the word of God, we are going to be judged according to what we talk. That's why you can't have any mixture in what you're saying. I can't preach to you on the knowledge of what I know about you. Can't. All that's got to be thrown down. Everything has to be emptied out. Yep. If I'm emptied out, then all of him must now start searching. The rivers of living water are not stopped up anymore. So when I pray for someone, I'm like, the other day, I'm like, God, I need a little pocket money. I don't got no money. I got 50 cents. <laughs> all of a sudden, God says that. Money. How's that God heard that little thing? Yeah. He says, you know what? Get ready. Everything you say now is going to come forth. Mm. So everything you talk to me about, I'm going to answer you. And I'm going to bring it to pass what you say. This is why I cannot say nothing bad about the people. I can't. I cannot have these emotions rule me because those are from my sinful nature. Now, now you're getting a little too spiritual. And what's wrong with you? What? You can't have a little bit of fun? Oh, come on. You know how many groups get together? Come on. And there's actually a party spirit that's been released. <laughs> They don't even recognize it? Yep. <clears throat> yep. You need to know that God is investing something so pure inside you yep. that these things that are coming at you are only to give you those arenas. Come on. Amen. Amen. Why did he place people with deception around you? <clears throat> for you to be deceived? No. No, for you to recognize them. That you would have the power over Amen. the spirit of deception. That's right. And you would break the powers of darkness. Come on. If you go, let's go real quick. Um, let's go real quick to, um, let's say Matthews. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. So you have to remember anything that you're going to deal with, he already dealt with. Come on. Okay? Yeah. So we go into Matthew chapter 8. And let's go from 23. Thirty-four. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> 
Now, and after he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly, behold, there arose a violent storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered up by the waves. But he was sleeping. And they went and awakened and saying, Lord, rescue and preserve us. We are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you timid and afraid, O you of little faith? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great and wonderful calm, a perfect peacefulness. Let's stop right there. Verse 23. And after he got into the boat, his disciples followed. Anytime you get in the boat with Jesus, something is about to act up. <laughs> Even the waters, water spirits are going to manifest. Winds are going to manifest because it wants to stop yep. you from where you need to get. So we, it's just not the people. Yep. It's darkness in other areas. So he goes here. And after he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly, behold, what time is it? I need a 11, 12. Okay. And suddenly, behold, there rose a violent storm on the sea, so that the boat was being covered up by the by the waves. But he was sleeping. Hmm. How is it that you can have peace in the midst of an awful storm? Ooh. Jesus. I'll repeat this for some. When you get into the boat with Jesus, get ready. What's going to happen? See, you got to remember here... They got into the boat, and God says, I'm going to allow you to see darkness in the wind, mm -hmm. in the wave, in the ocean. Mm -hmm. It didn't just come at them just to destroy them, but God says, when I take you into this place, get ready. And I want you to have peace in the situation. Okay? You're getting into the boat. Let's say, for example, you're getting into a situation. And here comes a demonic spirit in the winds. Here comes a demonic spirit of violence. Here comes a demonic spirit of waves. What was Jesus telling them? He said, don't be afraid. He says, number one, ye of little what? Faith. 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 Okay, he's about to stretch your faith in the areas concerning the utter darknesses that are flowing. Amen. Yes. The winds, the violent tempests, the waves. It cannot keep you from what you have to do. As long as the power of God is surging through you, even just a little bit, just even a little bit, it cannot stop you. It doesn't have that kind of power. Amen. Man. Amen. You got to remember everything that you're going through right now is to keep you in a place that you will never take the mark. Yes, amen. This is why you can't give up. That's right. Come on. You can't give up on the people that God has given you. Right. Because there is a darkness emerging. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, go into Revelation. Okay, so let me continue here. Okay. And they went and awoke him, saying, Lord, rescue and preserve us. We are what? Perishing. So what are you saying to God? Rescue me. I can't take this any longer. Rescue me. Don't you see that I'm perishing? And he said to 
to them, why are you timid and afraid? Oh, you of little faith. Then he got up and rebuked what? The wind. The wind. And what else did he rebuke? The sea. The sea. Ah, how is it that he's rebuking the winds and the sea? What is in the sea? Got a number. He's trying to teach them. God is trying to teach you and give you revelation of what is hidden in the darkness. He's about to show you the enemy and what he's doing. But see, you can only get that in his presence. So then he says, he got up and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was great and wonderful calm or perfect peaceableness. Mm. Verse 27. And the men were stunned with bewildered wonders and marvel, saying, What kind of man is this? that even the winds and the sea obey him. Amen. Yeah. Huh. And when he arrived to the other side, in the country of the gathering, two men under the control of demons. Okay. Number one, you're in the boat with him. He's okay. I'm going to show you darkness. And I want you to know that I have power over that darkness. So when you speak for me, it must what? It must what? It must be still. It must what? It must be still. Hmm. It must what? What's the person? Obey. Obey. Mm -hmm. Oh. Whatever you're dealing with, it must obey the word of the Lord. Even the very name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. That Jesus yes. Christ is Lord. See, you don't know the flames of fire that actually exist in you. you got to see it now. You've got to see it. Time is coming fast. Amen. Everything is going really fast. Yeah. But so is darkness yeah. becoming even greater. You're placed in a place that you can push darkness away Amen. from these people. Amen. But they're manifesting. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They're manifesting like the wind. <laughs> they're, they're getting violent. So don't be afraid. That's right. Don't be afraid any longer. Because I'm about to study like her do. And so when you speak it, it settles. It becomes perfect peace. Now, he teaches the disciples this about the wind the ocean, or the sea, the tempest, mm -hmm. of how violent the waves are. Now he says, okay, I've taught you this little area right here. Now I'm going to take you to another area. Mm -hmm. Some of you people are dealing with people that are in the gatherings, oh, okay. in the cave of darkness. Oh. You don't even know what you're dealing with, but you're dealing with darkness that is flowing through people. Amen. Come on. Just like Jesus dealt with the man in Gathering, yeah. the two men in Gathering, it's the same thing you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I need, I, I need to go away. No, you ain't going to go away. It's going to follow you wherever you go until you deal with it. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so let's go to Jesus. Gotta be you. verse 28. And when he had arrived 
at the other side in the country. Now, let me stop real quick there. Let me go back to verse 25. 25 says, And when they went out and awoke in him, saying, Lord, rescue, preserve me. How many people are wanting God to rescue them out of this problem? Mm. <laughs> who are they thinking about? Themselves. <laughs> when you're in this situation, who do you think about? Yourself. You know, Come on. Thinking of yourself. You're not thinking of the others. Because it feels like you have no more control. control. Yeah. I remember, when you let go of control, oh. then here comes true control. Amen. Self-control. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tanya. I've got a question. Yes, throw the question at me. <laughs> I may not be answered, but let's let the Holy Spirit answer. <laughs> Put it in my I'll try to be regain on what I'm going to say, but I've been, you know, a guy has been dealing with me and been reading the scriptures. You know, it's the same thing that you're ministering on, and I in. So I know that we have to search ourselves to get sent, to, you know, to get sent out of our lives to be a blessing, and you know, to the others that are around us. But when no, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back. What did you say? Come on. To get um, sent out of our lives to be a blessing to all those that are around us. Okay, let's stop that deception. Let me show you where. We're not trying to get delivered for the sake of other people. We're not getting out sin for them. We're getting sin out because of him. And he is the only person that I am getting delivered for. You cannot get delivered for the sake of the people. Kind of, if you do, then you're going to be where Jeremiah was. Distress. Dismay. Am I? Am. That's good. See, you got to remember, you have to know that you're not getting better for the people. You're getting better for him. And when he comes and he's pleased, then the radiation of who he is starts coming out. Amen. It's not for their sake. It's for his sake. Yeah. Embrace it. Okay, let me, okay, I just wanted to tweak that a little bit because how we view the people, now we have to work up something to make it better. And you gotta remember, no, much, no matter how much we make it better for them, it's, they're never happy. Okay, Go ahead. So, on my, so, that I am blessed to have around me. Good choice of words. So my question is, when I try to speak, it's, I don't know if I'm, being, um, if I'm being overtaken by, because it is pure evil. Mm -hmm. I don't know any other word to describe yeah. it. It's not that there's not love for the those people yeah, around yeah, me. Yeah. But now that I see what is what's speaking out of them, but it is vile, evil. It's 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 very demonic. And now God is like allowing you day. to see it for what it is. So now. now that I'm I I don't it's when I do try to say something, it's like that spirit shuts me down no matter what I say. Because I see it's a, I see what's speaking. I know what I'm, I'm up against. So then if I'm not able to verbally say something, then I just start praying mm -hmm. inside. And, and even though it, I can't explain what I deal with every day. It, it, I mean, right? it's evil. Right? It's not the per, it's evil. Okay. It's, it's the whole evil. It makes you want to give up, but at the same time, it's like, God, no. 
because your word declares that you are greater in me than he is in the world. And Lord, I thank you for this soul. I thank you for the salvation. You are his deliverer. That's what I was saying this morning. Okay. Now, you have to remember, when the disciples got into the boat, what manifested first? The wind. Yeah. What manifested first? Come on, Courtney. What manifested first? Because <laughs> I miss you. What manifested first? When they first get boys up on the boat. When they got into the boat, what manifested first? Man, you got a whole study over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm taking on you. I love you. Uh, but what manifested first, guys? Unbelief. Come, go back to the Fear. scripture. Fear. Don't give your own That's what I'm saying. It said violent storm on the sea. What, violence. What manifested? Go back. Because I... You, Deception what? wants you to illustrate it to fit. Fear. Timidity. Timid. Okay, so the first thing that manifested was fear. Yep. Okay? So, when they went to Jesus, they were dealing in the arena of fear. Yep. Okay? So let's take it down to you. In the arena that you're at, here is the spirit trying to intimidate you and shut you down. And what happens? The enemy says, okay, you got to live with this. You'll have to see what's coming up. Amen. Okay? Now, if they didn't shut you up in the bar while you were <laughs> drunk, why did they shut you up now? <laughs> She's not with them. She's not running with them. Yep. See, I want, I want you to see something because you, you're not all that quiet. Because he's abusive. <laughs> okay. He's been physically abusive. So I've noticed that fear has rose up in me because thoughts of him murdering him. Yeah, like, right. Okay, so. that rage and anger in him. Okay, so fear rises up, right? He uses God. Right. It's a very blasphemy. They all do. Yep, <laughs> yep. But what I'm saying is, what rose up? Fear, memory. This is the enemy trying to have control. Mm -hmm. You know where your control comes? Pick up the phone, call 911. All right, you're out of here. But he won't leave. Man. I used to be happy when my husband went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I'm like, I know where you're at. I you're in three meals. Yeah. You got blankets. You got pillows. Yeah. You got your own room. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Come on. That's the truth. So you got to remember, is here God is trying, to, not trying. The Holy Spirit is developing you, okay, in your intercession in your prayer, and you're talking with him, okay? And all of it is good. Now here comes the enemy to intimidate you. What do you do? Regress? Right? Okay. So you regress, and you look at the evil that is before you. You have to remember then there, there are some things of violence that we must take to the phone. If you don't want to straighten up, then you know what? People are not going to love me for this, but you are not there to be beat up. That's right. That's right. Never. Never. There's no more physical. Now mm -hmm. it's just a It's all words, yeah. Yes. Okay? So now what you're dealing with, you have to remember, these spirits have been living around you for a long time. Yes. Now that you're growing in God, it's starting to manifest again. 
like it once again. Because of Raymond. I pulled you out of darkness, not to stay in the darkness. That's right. Okay? So real quick, let's look at, in your arena, where you're at, because Jesus was there, let's go to what actually he did. Okay? So the first thing that we look at is the comfort of his love is the only thing that's going to take out that fear. Yep. That's the only thing. Number one, when the enemy brings these memories, you cannot latch on to it. You can't. Amen. Yep. Because if you latch on to it, it's going to talk more. And it's going to talk to him. And it's going to tell you your place like it did before. But God says, no. I want you to take my authority. I don't care if it's under your breath. You're taking that authority. It should be strength. Amen. Now, now remember, I said to you that I was with a person that uh, had to deal with some people and they were very violent. Okay? And so... They were really concerned. They wanted me to be there just in case these people acted up. And I'm like, I'm little. What do you want me to do? Because <laughs> they're like way big guys, okay? Mm -hmm. And so now God has, through my life, had me deal with big men mm -hmm. that are violent, okay? Mm -hmm. Every time, I'm like, every time he goes out of town, that's what I deal with. Yeah. Men that are violent. And so, when I was there, okay, they hadn't even gotten there. I started praying. And I started finding those spirits before they came. Yep. I said, you will not act up in yep. this home. I silenced your voice. I chain those things up that they cannot be violent. Amen. Yep. I restrain them with the power of God. Yes, amen. Just like how he did at the cross. And so all of a sudden, they get there, and they are so peaceful. How is it that I could talk? And they're way in Detroit. Right. How is it that that spirit had to listen to what I said? Hmm? It, was in the atmosphere. it could not manifest. Yeah. What happened? I spoke something to take authority over darkness that had no right. To be in my arena. Yes. Amen. I said, oh no. I'm here. This place now belongs to me. Amen. Because I'm like, Joshua, I'm going to yep. take this land. Yeah, hey, come on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it back and I don't care what the devil says. That's right. I am not moving. That's right. Come on. So here I look at just that. And I'm even praying under my breath. They don't even know I'm praying. Right. I'm praying under my breath. Right. And I'm praying in the spirit and I'm I'm taking authority and binding those things under my breath. How is it that they had they had to listen? See, you gotta remember this power that God has given us has nothing to do with the physical body that you're dealing with. It has to do spirit to spirit. We're dealing with spirits, and we have to handle it the way God says to handle it. Amen. So what do I do? I pray in the spirit, and I take that authority, and I speak to it and command it that it would not manifest. And it has not manifested since then. Okay, not my house, not my family, but I still have the authority. Yeah. 
Yes, amen. Did I ask him for their permission? Mm. No, I'm not going <laughs> to ask a spirit for its permission. Come on. Do you want to come out? <laughs> Do you want to listen to me because I have the power of Jesus? Oh. The words that God is giving you in the secret place need to be spoken out. Whether under your breath or not, that doesn't matter. You now have to take your place and speak those things that God has you to speak. Yes. See, we're looking at circumstances. We have to look here. Yes. To deal with this. Yep. But see, if we're moved by this, that's when the fear comes. Yep. See, that spirit actually wants to know, are you done with it? Are you yep. sick of it? Okay. Are you to the place that you're sick of it living in your home? Come on. Yep. Okay. If you're sick of it, then there's a place that you come to and repent for living with it. Yes. Tolerating it. See, we change for our environment and we cannot change that's right it's now time that we get to the one of the biggest things that i've learned is true repentance brings such great change in my mind yes, in my amen. heart so now when i look at that person it doesn't intimidate me yep. because now it doesn't have the power of control over me any longer. Amen. Amen. Remember I said when I dealt with the bag of wheat, okay? And that thing did not want to go down the toilet. <laughs> big bag. I, I'm not kidding you. It's this big. Trying to shove all that in the toilet, flush it. <laughs> it won't go down. I started speaking to that water spirit. I said, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you, and I command you to go back, and you cannot live in my home. Did it leave right away? No, I had to go back and say, in the name of Jesus, you're going down. <laughs> Because I knew I wasn't dealing with the weed. I'm dealing with the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I had to take that authority. I had to make a decision. Do I want them to be happy and all calm and be good for me? Or do I want that spirit out? Amen. Come on. Some people don't want people to get off weed because look at how they act. They would rather have them high and numbed up. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can't you, you can't have it that way. That's right. What do you gotta do? What what was it that I said you have to do? Number one, recognize what you've allowed to live there. Turn to God. So you gotta remember. When we are used to the spirit of addiction, we've been living so long with it that we don't know how to live without it. Right. So when the enemy brings the people around with the addiction, it's there to taunt you, beat you down with the words. What do you think that they were doing the whole time when they were whipping Jesus? They were beating him down. Mm -hmm. Punching him in the face, spitting in him. Let alone having to carry the cross that was so heavy, not even a normal man could carry it. That's right. But here this man is beaten so fierce. Had they known what he was going to do at the cross, they would have never beat him. But because it was prophesied, yep. it must come to pass. 
See, anything that's here must come to pass. There's no, uh, can I pray it away or, no. This is in solid blood. Yep. Anything else outside of this is conditional. Right. So, what has to happen is go back. Allow God to show you your heart. Man, when God started showing me a heart, I'm like, oh, goodness, I thought I dealt with that. Amen. And like, you dealt with it, but you actually didn't fully let it go. Yes. Because the memory kept coming and coming. God says, are you done? I had to make a decision. So let's look at what Jesus did. How much time did I got left? Well, we got 11.42. Okay. Okay, so in verse 28, let's look at Jesus. Am I giving you a little bit of understanding? Yeah. Okay, so I didn't, I couldn't move in fear of what I saw other people doing and how they made other people get. I could not walk in that thing. Because if I did, that thing would have obeyed. Mm -hmm. Remember when I showed you that the winds had to what? Obey. Everything had to obey mm -hmm. the Lord. Yeah. Was it because they wanted to, of course not, they don't want to obey. Is it wrong to cry? Huh? Is it wrong to cry a little bit? No, it, as long as the cry is given to God to release mm -hmm. and let God heal. Yes. Crying is not wrong as long as it's not. I, I hear people crying, I know it's the spirit crying out of them. As like you said last week, as long as it's not a cry of... <gasps> I got caught. <laughs> so we look at number one is that those tears aren't wrong because that's what God says. I collect those tears. Yeah. And I'm putting them, you're putting them before me and I have to answer you. Because I promised you that I would answer you. Amen. He that calls upon the name of the Lord, he shall do. Well, I mean, like for any of us, like if we, I know that I, it's not that I get offended or anybody that says something to me. Um, it's just that it, because the words can be so hurtful mm -hmm. that I, I want to cry, and mm -hmm. then I don't. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want my emotions to get in the way. Okay, so let's let's deal with that. Okay, so when the word comes, even though it's harsh, because the word is is strong, it's to annihilate what the enemy is doing, okay? So, when we cry, got to remember, spirit, soul, and body. One time the Lord showed me my spirit crying. And it was crying for help and deliverance and healing. And when he showed me that, I literally saw tears coming down from the space of my spirit realm. I'm like, whoa, that's amazing because I didn't know that that's possible. So when I cried, when that cry was coming out of me, it wasn't coming from the soul realm. It was coming from my spirit that was crying. So when we cry by the Spirit of God inside us, our spirit, that cry is not wrong. But when we cry according to the cervical realm, it's like, I'm sick of this, and I don't want to deal with this anymore. And so there's all this stuff, emotion that's rising. So you got to remember, we try to be so perfect when we don't have to. But the only one perfect is here comes the Spirit of God, and it's developing you that way. But until then, you have to know that when the emotion is rubbing up, you know where it's coming from. 
because we do know where it comes from. I'm just tired of the math. I'm coming from frustration, coming from anger. And see, my cry cannot be that way. My cry has to be pure before God. So when it's from your spirit man, it has a pure cry. And it will cry. It cries for the hunger of God. Like, I want more of God. I want to be with you. Let me just go home with you. There's that cry. Because we're longing for him. So, let's real quick, because I know our time is almost up. Okay. Did that help you? Because uh, yeah. what I heard her say, and she said it under her breath, it, it's hurtful. So that's mm -hmm. still from the emotion then, right? No, because she said when he's, when he's speaking to her, saying things mm -hmm. verbally, it's hurtful. And sometimes what I'm saying is that, uh, we'll say, for example, on Sunday when we left church, had lunch, and again, you know, his words can be very um, hurtful. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to cry. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that's in the emotional. It's okay to cry. Because the attack, I mean, I thank God for the armor. That's why I, I the battle's not my own, I understand. Right. But see, you got to remember, God, God created us to cry, laugh, all that stuff. And you gotta remember, when you come into the kingdom, you're crying and your laughter comes from a different area now. So, can we be hurt with what they're saying? Yes. But the Spirit of the Lord now raises up a standard. Meaning, I'm crying, God now defends. The standard is different where I just wanna give up. The standard is different. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the cry is okay. Now there's a cry that spirits have, and there's a cry that a believer has. Right. Two different cries. The cry, the, the cry of an unbeliever is demonic mm. because it's not in God. Right. The cry of the believer seeks its help. Right. Seeks its God. It wants to be rescued. Okay, Amen. real quick. Let me give you this. I don't know if I just been speaking to myself, but here we go. Okay. So it says, and when he arrived to the other side in the country of the gathering, two men under the control of what? Demons. Demons. Sonia, what were they under the control of? Demons. <laughs> ah. So right now, the people that are around you are under the influence of demon. Reality. That's your reality. They're under control of a demon. Not maybe they're under that control right now. Control of the demons went to meet who? Him. Him. Jesus. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus. They went to Jesus. Now, what I want you to look at, well, let me finish the scripture. It says, under the control of demons, went to meet him, coming out of where? Yep. The tomb. Yeah. So fierce and savage that no one was able to pass by. Uh. And behold, they shrieked and screamed. Yep. What have we to do with us? Jesus, Son of God, have you come to torment us? Before the appointed time, do you uh, see how they're quoting scripture? Uh huh. You see what? The word. <laughs> they didn't even know the word back then, but yet they're quoting it. Now try and think back. Something that they've not heard yet. They're actually quoting something to Jesus be because yep. they know that they have yep. an appointed time. 
Yep. How did they know this? Mm. Hmm. What is he trying to do? This demon possessed person, persons, are coming out from where? Yeah. Okay, this is me. This is not, I'm not saying this is God. This is me. I don't understand why people go into the places where dead people are at. Yeah, come on. <coughs> they find a rest there. Mm -hmm. They take their walk there and feel still. <sighs> That's demonic. Spirits love to be where death is. Yep. <coughs> Touchy subject. <laughs> it's a Yep. Jesus. It is. Now think about it. Many people, yep. Christians, are taking their walks in the graveyard. Mm. Where tombs are at. That's it. Where actual spirits reside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would Christians want to go there had something not directed them there? Mm. Can't go there. Yep. Like I said, this is Amen. me. Right, right, Amen. right. I'm like, why am I going to go to where the dead people are? And hang out, yeah. And hang out day after day and like, <laughs> I feel the peace of God. What? No, that's deception. Yes, it is. You have to know where you walk now. Yep. You have to have the reality of God waking you up and saying, Ooh, why am I in the tombs? Yep. I have a place where yes. yep. the dead people are. Amen. I just had to throw that little bit in there, real quick. But again, that's me. Okay, real quick, let me give you this. Uh, coming out of the tomb so fierce and savage that no one was able to pass by. Pass that way, I'm sorry. And behold, they shrieked and they screamed. What have you to do with us, Jesus? Son of God, have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the opposite. A spirit will torment you, but now this spirit is saying, why have you come to torment us? Yep. Want you see something? Mm. What are the demons telling Jesus? Why have you come to torment us? Well, now take it into your arena. They're no longer tormenting you because you are now tormenting them yep. with the spirit of the living God. Amen. 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 See, God's going to turn the table. Yep. Come on. You just now got to see it. Amen. Yep. It's no longer you being tormented by them, it's you. With the power of yep. them tormenting them. Yes. Anybody getting what I'm yep. saying? Amen. Yep. Amen. See, yep. people are so tormented, <laughs> and they're not supposed to be that yep. way. If they're tormented, there's a hidden reason mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it says, it says, uh, "Have you come to torment us?" Before the appointed time. Now at that, now at some distance from there, a drove of many hogs were glazing. Mm -hmm. And the demons begged him. What's happening? Demons they begged, begged him. him. Wait a minute, that's not in my book. <laughs> Demons don't do it. Yes, they do. They don't want to go out. That's right. They're begging to stay. And if they can go into something else, they're going to be happy. Mm -hmm. They're begging Jesus. These demons. Mm -hmm. Come on, I want you to get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because the enemy doesn't like you walking in the authority that he's called you to. And when you come on the scene with your intercession, your worship. Yes. Amen. Guess what? Come on. 
Please don't do that any longer. Just turn off your crazy music. You're tormenting them. Yep. Okay. I hope you can catch what I'm uh -huh. trying to say. Amen. Amen. It is. It says, And the demons begged him, If you drive us out, send us into the droves of hog. Hmm. These things wanted to go into the animals. Yeah. So you gotta remember, there's spirits in animals, and oh, we yeah. don't even realize that. Come on. Do you ever see? Do you ever see a person literally make their dog yep. a baby? Oh, come on. They take care of it like a baby. They dress it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to see something. Because the world said, dress them, what did the people do? Dress them. Oh, Not only that, leave them some money. Oh, my In your goodness. will. Oh. How bizarre is that? Very bizarre. Yep. Bestiality yep. started coming yep. and unfolding, and everybody said yes. Man, the animals dictate to the adults. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't want to eat that food. I want better food. What's a person going to do? Go buy more expensive food. What is controlling them? The animal. An animal can only be an animal. That's you right. You can love them and pray, in, and pray for them. But they cannot dictate to you. Mm. You know, when our dog died, mm. uh, I had people say, I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, it must I, be really painful. <laughs> no. It's a dog. Yep. It was my dog. I enjoyed him for the time that yep. God gave me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want you to hear something. Uh-huh. Yeah. Come on. Remember, the dog, <laughs> our dog, when it was a baby, uh, would steal money out of my purse. Wow. It would steal money. That's a demon. Wow. Spirit of thief. <laughs> yep. It would go in and get the dollars out of 20s, whatever I had in my wallet. It would sneak and go get the money. Now that's not normal. No. I had to rebuke that thing. Amen. Wow. What spirit entered that dog? Spirit of thievery. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> You have to know that you cannot bring these animals to your level. Mm. They cannot be there. You know who did that? The Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Cannot do that. An animal is an animal. They just Say goodbye, you. you'll see them in heaven. Oh, because dear. there's tons of dogs up there, tons <laughs> of cats. <laughs> Every animal we have down there is already the original, a yeah. So you can go enjoy them there. But to actually go into depression? Come on. Anxiety? Mm. No. Something had a hold of you. Come on. I am not going to grieve over my animal like I would grieve losing my mother. Come on. I got to some in. I didn't go into depression with my mother. That's right. I knew she had it better than me. Yep. Wow. But I want you to see, because the world started saying, what did the church people do? Take the same concept. Yep, sure did. They didn't look at it as bestiality. That's right. Ah. Mm. Man, I knew a woman. She had one of those hot belly pigs. <laughs> and that pig would sleep with her. Oh. Every day. Disgusting. She thought it was the neatest thing. She kicked her husband out of bed and 
That's a big one. Okay. How messed up is that? Yeah, that's pretty messed up. Pretty sure. That's bestiality. Yep. Okay, so I got off a different <laughs> very true. <laughs> I'm a joke. Okay. <laughs> that. Being recorded. Hallelujah. That dog is not going to comfort you like the Holy Spirit comforts That's right. You. Amen. Come on. Come on. Oh. You. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and he said to them, Be gone. So they came out and went into the what? Humps. And behold, the whole. The whole what? Drove. 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 Rushed down the steep. Bent into the city. And died in the water. Now watch the people. They're not happy about this. Mm -mm. <laughs> not one. They weren't happy that these guys got delivered because it, since they got delivered, they lost their pain. Amen. <laughs> they lost their business. Now look, here. The herdmen fled and went into the town and reported everything, including what happened to the men under the power of demons. Mm. And behold, the whole town went out to meet Jesus. And as soon as they saw him, they begged him to depart. From them. Oh, man. Mm. Come on. Yeah. They weren't even happy that these people right. got... These people are tormenting. They won't let nobody go by. They're naked. They're cutting themselves. They're abusive language. Right. They weren't even happy. Kind of like some people now. Yep. They get to love her, and they're not even happy. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Ah, oh, you took away my animal, or you took away my money. You don't get it. You cannot respond like the people of the world. Amen. Amen. They go in sorrow because of an animal. Yeah. Man, they're making grief sites. Uh huh. I can barely afford the grave site for my mother. <laughs> right. <laughs> I told my husband, if anything ever happens to me, God willing, uh, that. It won't, but right. it says, don't even spend no money. Throw me at the ditch. <laughs> I would no, never no. do that. <laughs> but I'm looking at, I'm gone. Yep. I'm gone. Like, I ain't crying for nobody. I'm rejoicing in that. Amen. Okay, let's stand. Had you in the seat. I didn't even give you five minute break. <laughs> Father, we thank you today, Father. We thank you for your precious word. Father, we thank you as you're sending the captives free. Father, right now we speak freedom, we speak healing, we speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you as you set forth your word, Father. It shall not return void, but it shall accomplish all that you are sending it out to do. And Father, we send the word to Sonia's house. We come together in the name of Jesus. We bind those spirits that are tormenting. Father, we bind those spirits in the name of Jesus. Father, that they would have come to a place of repentance. Father, we silence the voices in the name of Jesus. We come against the fear and the doubt in the unbelief. In the name of Jesus, I speak freedom in the name of Jesus.